Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Thursday. Hope we're having a wonderful kind of middle of the week here. And we've got some uh, pretty interesting things to talk about in today's video. Uh, the good news is whatever uh, problems we were receiving from Barrel is finally on and out of here. Uh, but uh, we are going to see some new challenges in the forecast in a couple different areas. Uh, one big thing we're going to talk about today is the threat of some uh, tropical mischief right off the southeast coastline that could lead to some very impressive rainfall totals potentially for some areas uh, that could really use it. So that's going to definitely be something we talk about in today's video. Also a severe weather threat on down the road for portions of the country. I'll let you know who that is. And, um, you know, definitely we'll also talk about a couple other things in today's video. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. We are trying to get to 10,000 here by the end of hurricane season, which would be uh, the start of November. So uh, that's a big goal we have for the channel, and I'd love to, you know, do everything we can to get there. Also, like the video. That really helps us to kind of um, spread this information out and reach more people uh, and kind of, uh, you know, just grow the community here, which is also a very big goal uh, of ours on the channel. So uh, I think with all that said, uh, this will probably be a little bit of a shorter video just because again barrel is out of here and while we do have other things to talk about um, you know barrel is really what was taking up most of our time in the past couple videos so let's go ahead and dive right on into things now we're gonna start with visible satellite imagery I like showing uh, this one uh, whenever things are a little more quiet because it just shows you who's waking up with clouds and who isn't and a lot of us over the United States are not waking up with any cloud cover this morning uh, but there are areas that definitely are. The northeast is one area that is still dealing with some cloud cover, which is technically still due to barrel. Uh, but, uh, you know, clouds are one thing, tornadoes are another. And that's what we saw yesterday through a lot of the northeast. So the good news is um, a much nicer day today, despite the cloud cover and a couple showers left over uh, up into portions of the um, portions of New England there through Maine, New Hampshire and Vermont. Uh, other than that, another area that you'll notice that is a very uh, big topic in today's video is this big area of cloud cover just off the coast of Florida. Uh, and if you pay really close attention here, we've actually got a little spin right in here, uh, displaced a little bit from that cloud cover. And uh, this is an area highlighted by the National Hurricane Center with a small chance, and I do mean a very small chance, of developing. Uh, but don't let your guard down, because whether this develops or not, we're going to see a lot of rain for some folks. And uh, honestly, I wouldn't completely rule out development here. I know it's only about a 10% chance, so uh, 1 in 10 shot of this developing before moving inland into the Carolinas. But uh, we've already got a big area of convection <clears throat> just displaced from that center. Also, um, you know, the Gulf Stream is right in here, which is going to provide plenty of ocean heat content for this uh, system. Uh, so, you know, we'll watch that. But either way, the impacts are going to remain the same, whether this gets the name Debbie or, uh, you know, just remains an open tropical wave here just off the coast and that eventually moves inland. Uh, the main impacts will stay the same. And we'll talk about all that in today's video. Um, also, one more area I will mention is we do have a couple leftover showers and storms through portions of the Midwest uh, and the Mississippi River Valley. And uh, we can show you that on radar here as well, uh, which will be the next thing we talk about. All right, so national look at radar. Again, uh, the areas that are still seeing some problems are generally the areas that have cloud cover, some showers, and a couple rumbles of thunder moving on through New England this morning. Again, that's due to barrel, but now very quickly moving offshore. So, if, excuse me, if anyone is watching in Maine, definitely let me know if you're seeing any rain out there. Uh, same story here into upstate New York, uh, into the Adirondacks, seeing uh, some showers left over from, uh, you know, that um, lift in the atmosphere due to barrel moving on through. Midwest, also again, some scattered showers and storms this morning, like I mentioned, especially up into the Chicago area, just outside of Chicago, uh, seeing some rain there. Same story back here towards the Kansas City metro area. Other than that, uh, again, this area of low pressure spinning just off the coastline is kind of the big story here. A lot of rain just off the southeast coast currently, but some of that has made its way inland uh, here over central Florida. Uh, Florida, I think I said Florida there for a second. Um, uh, but over central Florida along the I-4 corridor, seeing some uh, pretty good rain this morning. Also along the uh, coastal areas of eastern North Carolina up into southeastern Virginia and even through portions of the Delmarva, uh, seeing this kind of stalled out area of showers and storms uh, and that is just really going to be the start of what is going to be waves of on and off rain throughout the next 48 to 72 hours for portions of the southeast and uh, we'll really dive into that a good bit here. 
Uh, I completely forgot that I had the zoomed in areas of these maps, so I'm going to kind of very quickly gloss over some of the things I just already said. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention is we do have uh, some storms definitely working in out of the Gulf into portions of Texas and Louisiana into those coastal areas. Um, and uh, we'll definitely, you know, uh, see some more of that throughout the day today. But zooming in on what is our current area of interest out here, uh, again, low pressure just off the coast of the southeast. And most of that rain, like I said, is still offshore from Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Uh, but as I mentioned, some heavier pockets of rain right Right now moving through the I-4 corridor from Tampa over towards Orlando uh, and then portions of the east coast of Florida as well. Also some showers down through um, the Fort Myers, Naples area, uh, even uh, over Lake Okeechobee and into the Keys seeing some showers this morning. Uh, but all things considered mainly dry still for most of the mid-Atlantic outside again of kind of that area where we're seeing some clashing of boundaries here uh, producing some showers and storms there into portions of Virginia uh, and coastal North Carolina. Line them. <clears throat> All right, so watches, warnings, and advisories. What are we seeing out there currently? Well, um, you know, a lot more quiet than what we were seeing, but we are already seeing some problems uh, spots here into North Carolina and Virginia. As I mentioned, uh, we have a flood watch in effect here from Norfolk uh, all the way down to Greenville, North Carolina. They're uh, near East Carolina University, Jacksonville, North Carolina, just outside of New Bern here. Uh, Goldsboro, again, just kind of in this area, even east of I-95 in North Carolina. Uh, seeing some flooding and in fact we've already got some flash flood warnings this morning again that rain is just dumping right now over some of the same areas uh, and this will be a theme throughout the day these areas that are already getting a lot of rain gonna get even more um, by the time you know we get to uh, the weekend so and this will be a theme I want you to watch out for. Uh, have a way to get watches and warnings should any flash flooding occur. Uh, but the one, you know, saving grace here is we need the rain. And I probably should have pulled up a drought map. But um, uh, unfortunately, drought conditions are just really tough out here uh, into portions of the Carolinas and Virginia and really much of the eastern half of the country, uh, east of the Appalachia chain at least. Um, you know, are dealing with drought concerns. So this rain will definitely help to, you know, ease concerns, but we are going to see some flooding due to it, uh, and that is something to watch out for. Also, same story up here into the northeast where we're seeing some flooding, uh, again, from the Adirondacks through the uh, northern sections of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Plenty of flood advisories up for all that rain we saw from Barrel yesterday. Uh, and again, some of those creeks and streams still running high. Other than that, the east is pretty quiet. Again, still some flood warnings into the Mississippi River Valley from uh, all that rain we've seen the past couple of weeks. And out west, still just fire dangers, uh, which is uh, you know pretty common for this time of year. Also some heat advisories down near Houston and Boston. Uh, but other than that, um, things remain relatively quiet. All right, zooming into this area off the southeast coast and really diving into it a little bit more here. Uh, again, on satellite imagery, the spin is uh, kind of right here. So all of that convection is displaced pretty far towards the west there. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, it is still, you know, um, kind of leading uh, to uh, some areas that the National Hurricane Center is watching uh, due to this low-level spin and uh, due to all of this precipitation that is not very far from that spin. Uh, so again, you'll notice uh, most of the heavy rain still offshore as we've talked about, but uh, just look at this front. This is pretty cool to actually watch happen. Uh, we've got uh, kind of that front from barrel that's uh, now stalled out over eastern North Carolina. That on top of the sea breeze that is kind of working back inland uh, is what is creating this big area of showers and storms that has just stalled over eastern North Carolina. Uh, so some interesting meteorological things kind of getting put together there. Uh, but uh, you can see that front kind of getting drug all the way down uh, into this low pressure and, uh, you know, getting kind of that curly hook look to it. And uh, as I talked about in yesterday's video, uh, this is forming off of a stalled front, and we can see that just beautifully on satellite this morning. Uh, and we can also see it on visible satellite quite well. Uh, so you'll notice here, um, again, uh, here's that spin just off uh, the coast of the southeast. Uh, here's that front draping down and getting kind of that curly hook uh, look into that as that low, pre uh, low pressure is beginning to develop. So just some pretty cool meteorological things ongoing here. Uh, and the even cooler part is we're going to get rain out of it for areas that need it. All right, National Hurricane Center, as I mentioned, is monitoring this for development. Chances of development are quite low, though, only I think running about 10% right now. But uh, whether this develops or not before moving inland and overland uh, by the weekend uh, really will not matter all that much. It's just going to be rain that is the big deal here, not dealing really with any surge or 
um, strong wind gusts that we might see with an actual tropical system. Uh, this is just going to be some good old fashioned heavy rainfall uh, and some of our models are picking up on that quite well here. So you'll notice, uh, moving this ahead throughout the day today, again, uh, probably underdoing this a little bit here, at least where this front is stalled out. As I mentioned, uh, I've been talking about it here uh, with that uh, kind of hook shape. Uh, so anywhere right along this front, expect a little bit more rain than this model is showing into eastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia um, throughout the day. But we will uh, go ahead and move this ahead into time and you'll notice that rain continuing to dump over eastern North Carolina. Uh, also some pretty good rain through much of central Florida. And by the time we get throughout this afternoon and this evening, uh, rainfall begins to spread a little bit further south into South Carolina likely uh, as that front uh, again continues to drape over some of the same areas and that sea breeze begins to clash with it. Uh, we're going to see some rain really pick up and also eventually uh, the low pressure that was down here itself is going to start to move further inland uh, and increase some of that lift with it and bring in some of that rain and we could see a lot of it. Um, now I don't think it's going to be a washout for most people. Uh, unfortunately this morning in eastern North Carolina it is a washout. Um, but I think most of the Carolinas and Virginia, it's just going to be kind of dodging this rain. Same thing for Florida. It's going to be on and off now through overnight tonight into Friday morning here. More waves of rain moving inland. Uh, again, uh, low pressure probably right near the Charleston area, at least on this model. Uh, and anything on this side is just going to have a lot of rain. Uh, and even into Florida, some of that spin coming in off the Gulf. Uh, we're just going to get a lot of rounds of rain kind of moving around um, this uh, low pressure system. Uh, throughout the next couple of days. And again, this is getting into Friday afternoon now. I think Friday afternoon is probably the best shot for rain for anyone in the Carolinas, uh, especially our folks back near uh, Greensboro, Charlotte, Columbia, uh, this area that is kind of on the edge of uh, the rainfall forecast here. I think Friday afternoon is your best shot at picking up on some rain. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and uh, we will definitely hope for that. Again, very heavy though. It's that tropical moisture. Whenever it comes down, it's going to come down hard and heavy. Uh, and uh, again, really just squeeze out any amount of water we can from the atmosphere. Uh, and that's going to continue even overnight uh, Friday into Saturday here. You'll notice uh, still rounds of rain moving on and off uh, through portions of the Carolinas. Uh, and then we'll have to switch to a different model here uh, to go out the rest of the time. But even Saturday morning, waking up with pockets of rain uh, that will continue throughout the day Saturday uh, before I think getting into Sunday, things begin to calm down. So uh, it's really now through Sunday, I think is going to be the most of the rain that falls. Uh, but don't rule out a couple of leftover showers even into our Sunday afternoon. Uh, we'll definitely have to watch out for that. Um, but nonetheless, just know uh, plenty of rain is on the folks for uh, on the way for lots of folks. And uh, the Weather Prediction Center agrees. Today, um, already having an excessive rainfall outlook. And in fact, uh, this map probably should be updated because again, we're already seeing a pretty big flash flooding uh, in that circled red area on your map. Uh, but again, note the threat is there today. Also tomorrow, we're going to see more of that threat. Wouldn't be surprised again to see an upgrade maybe to a moderate uh, kind of in this area of eastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia. Uh, but rain's going to be falling all the way up even through New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland. Uh, and uh, again, up into even portions of coastal Massachusetts, uh, you know, with this event. But really, the heavy, uh, uh, heaviest of it is going to be right in this area uh, that I kind of have circled on your map. In fact, I'm going to actually redraw that uh, kind of right in here. It's going to be the bullseye for rainfall. Uh, and you're going to see that very well here on our total precipitation map. Again, potentially upwards of half a foot of rain is not out of the question, especially in those areas that are seeing it right now uh, in eastern North Carolina. If you add that on what's to come, it very easily could pass half a foot of rainfall total uh, through Greenville, North Carolina, Newburgh, North Carolina, Elizabeth City, uh, Goldsboro, and uh, kind of some of those surrounding areas. Other areas that will also get rain out of this, um, the Myrtle Beach area, the PD area of South Carolina, which is in a very uh, tough drought right now. I think lesser totals down there, but still an inch to two of rain. Uh, you know, isolated spots a little bit more, other spots a little bit less just due to the scattered nature of things. Um, but, you know, rain down that way. Also up near the Del Marva, uh, a good one to three inches of rain on the way. And again, this is an area that could use it. Uh, it's been quite dry recently. So, Again, we'll be watching for that uh, throughout the next couple of days. 
All right, final threat I will talk about in today's video, and I use the word threat, but uh, it's something that we're pretty used to and uh, has uh, been ongoing all year here, and that is severe weather uh, up into the northern Great Plains. So day three with, uh, let's do the math, today's Thursday, Friday, Saturday here, uh, a slight risk of severe weather for the Twin Cities up through uh, portions of the Dakotas as well. Uh, and that's not all of it. That's Saturday, Sunday, we'll do it again. Uh, again, through the Twin Cities, Madison, Wisconsin here, uh, Green Bay, Chicago, Gary, Indiana, uh, the uh, Des Moines area could see some strong storms Sunday and Monday as well. Many of the same areas being highlighted by the Storm Prediction Center here for the threat of some strong to severe weather. And all of it uh, is going to be due to this area of high pressure uh, at 500 millibars. And uh, we're going to get kind of this ring of fire effect that we talk about a lot this time of year. Uh, and again, just kind of watch what happens as I move this ahead. And I'm going to kind of draw the high pressure here and watch the edge of it, uh, particularly these isobars here. Uh, and uh, just, you know, watch generally what happens here in that area as I move this ahead in time. Uh, so this is Saturday. You'll notice, uh, you know, things getting a little bit stronger in our wind profiles and our isobars for uh, Sunday afternoon at this point, uh, right up along the edge of this high pressure. And what's going to happen is this area of wind shear uh, is going to just kind of ride the ridge here and then uh, eventually up through the northeast and uh, could bring some severe weather with it. Sunday afternoon here, uh, Monday, Tuesday here, again, really deepening that trough there at 500 millibars, uh, and eventually even swings it through the northeast. So maybe next week, about a week from now or so, uh, could have to watch for some severe weather once again uh, through New England and the I-95 corridor of the northeast. So we'll be watching that, uh, and I'll even pull up one more map here uh, just for the fun of it. If we look at our severe weather ingredients through our GFS ensemble members, uh, move this ad into time. Again, here we go, Sunday afternoon uh, into Minneapolis and kind of surrounding areas. Uh, again, ingredients continue there from Monday and Tuesday. And then, uh, yeah, sure enough, kind of pick up a little bit into the Northeast and the Ohio River Valley uh, going about a week out from now. So we'll see if that mounts uh, to anything, but definitely, uh, nonetheless, uh, could see some uh, strong storms through portions of the Midwest going into this weekend as long, excuse me, as well as all of that rain ongoing uh, into portions of the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic. Alrighty, I appreciate y'all watching the video. Again, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely do so. Like the video and, uh, you know, comment, let me know what you're seeing out there and uh, let me know if you're excited for fall to come because personally, I am very excited. I'm about tired of the boring summer weather. Uh, I could use a nice cold front right now. So again, that's, uh, that's my opinion. Let me know what you think though uh, in the comments below. Alrighty, y'all have a great rest of your Thursday and I'll see you all tomorrow.